When I became the, the lead pastor of this church five and a half years ago, um, I, I had this strong sense that, like kind of as you heard Michelle speak, that God has certain things for you. And as I saw it, I said, okay, Lord, what's my, I mean, I'm going to be the lead pastor of the church, but God really, like, what, what are you calling me to? And what's the bigger thing? And I felt very strongly uh, the Lord say, Matt, you're 39 years old. When I became the lead pastor, I was 39 years old. So let's just call it 40. Matt, you're 40 years old, like right in the middle of life. He said, you've been a part of this church for like 30 years nearly, 25 years at that time. He said, I want you to honor the generation that's gone before you. And I want you to prepare this church for the generation that's coming up. And, and so as I've then, then been the lead pastor for five years and I continually return to it and say, God, how, how am I honoring the generation that's gone before us and in this church? And how are we preparing this church for the generation that's coming up and the generation that, that's following? Even what Michelle spoke on this morning, even like Generation Y. Lord, how is this church going to be handed off to the next generation? So when it comes to membership, let me, let me say something really clearly. Membership is not what this church is about. Like, the staff and elders don't get together and say, how can we get more members? Wouldn't that be great to have more members? That is never, that is not the heart. That's not my heart. That's not the heart of the leaders of this church. We, we, we do say, Man, how can we have more followers of Jesus who are committed to His Lordship, who know Him as King in that way that Michelle spoke of this morning? We, we talk, I'm going to spill the beans a little bit, but uh, we did this uh, strategic initiative, and we're saying, and the strategic planning session, we got six different initiatives. The primary one was refining the mission and vision of the church. We've, we've been working together, and we say, you know what this church is about? Helping people have authentic relationships with God. God, that, that our connection with you is genuine and real and authentic relationships with each other. This is a church that's a family of people that invite people in to follow Jesus and then equip and deployed to, to go and transform our homes and our communities and the world with the love of God. That's what we're about. We're not about like, let's make more members. Is that clear? Yeah. We, we hear the heart uh, of what we're about. So, why are we doing membership? Why am I saying, want to have 100 people here, uh, want to have 100 people mem members within these next, this month? Let me say, I want to honor the generation that's gone before us. L let me tell you guys, I'm going to give us a little bit of history. Probably most of us do not know this. I'm going to give us a bit of a history that Boulder Valley Christian Church is an independent, non-denominational Christian church. We don't have a denomination over us. We're independent. Okay? Well, well we don't have a denomination over us, and we're independent. So we're governed by what we do in here. The elders, and I'm going to speak of a little bit later, help govern this church and set, hey, here's who we are as a church. Here's where we're going. So we're independent. We're non-denominational. Yet, we have a history. This church comes from something that's not a denomination, but it is a movement. This movement started in the 1800s, mid-1800s, by some really cool-looking old dudes. Um, a guy named Barton Stone and Thomas and his son Alexander Campbell. That in, in the 1800s, he was actually, Barton Stone and Thomas Campbell were actually Presbyterian ministers. And at that time, in that generation, denominations be, became, <clears throat> began to be fairly divisive. And you say, okay, the Presbyterians, you hang out there. The Methodists, you hang out there. Uh, you know, we'll, 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 and you, they split up. Us Baptists, we need to be over here. And it seemed that the church, the body of Christ, was really split up into their little denominational segments. And these Presbyterian pastors said, we don't like this. And th they had all these creeds. Well, we believe this and this. And the other group said, well, we have this creed and we believe this and this. A and these pastors said, no, I don't think, that's, I don't think this is the way God intended it. And so they started something that called the Restoration Movement. You should know this. The Restoration Movement. Could we restore the church, instead of all these denominational sects, to just restore it to being about the Bible? 
Could, could we not just have these creeds that, that divide us? Could we just go to the scriptures and let it direct us? So some of the sayings that when this restoration movement, they, they said, where the scriptures speak, we speak. Where the scriptures are silent, we are silent. Let's not fight about all this non-biblical stuff. They said, we're Christians only but not the only Christians. It was a group that said, hey, we want to just be Christians. We don't want to be the Baptist Christians or the Presbyterian Christians. We just want to follow Christ and His Word. But we also recognize we're not the only Christians. There's many other Christians and many other denominations. And then here's a great one. In essentials, unity. In the essentials of the faith, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. So some of you want to dress this way or dress that way or play these drums in service or not these drums. Those aren't essentials, man. There's liberty and freedom. And in all things, charity. And that, that's, a great, that's a great statement from this founding restoration movement. Now over time, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but this non-denominational restoration movement organized and then split. <laughs> Aren't us Protestants great, right? I protest. So, do you come to today? There's three main sects. There's three main sections or elements within this restoration movement that started in the 1800s. The first one's your disciples of Christ. There's Cairn Christian Church on 287 and Arapaho right now. They are disciples of Christ Church. The disciples of Christ are the most liberal open membership. You don't have to be a Christian. You can kind of believe whatever you want to believe. Almost like unity-ish. Um, low value on baptism and Lord's Supper and, and scripturally really broad. Hey, the Bible's just a good idea, but Jesus maybe didn't really rise from the dead. It's just talking about how we can all overcome our struggles. And so it can be very loose, the most loose of these. Independent Christian Church is the most moderate. A high value still of baptism and the Lord's Supper, so communion and baptism. Biblical orthodoxy would be historically, don't get hung up on that word, I maybe use the wrong word, but biblically would be in line with what, what Christians have believed since the time of Christ's resurrection and say, hey, we believe that the Bible is a word of God. That Jesus really did rise from the dead. That he, is, that he is a propitiation. He is the atonement for our sins. We have life in him that his spirit did come and fills the believer and directs us. So that is the independent Christian church. Boulder Valley Christian Church is an independent Christian church. Okay, then you have a church of Christ. The church of Christ is the most conservative. There's a church of Christ. If you go up South Boulder Road, turn left on 76, it's right there on the right. It's another BVCC, Boulder Valley Church of Christ. Um, one time we let them use a bunch of coolers of ours and they, they wrote BVCC on it. And anyway, we, <laughs> I didn't know which BVCC it was. Uh, they're the most conservative. They, if you go to that church, they're non-instrumental. That there came a time actually in this movement that they split because they got in an argument, the, the like room split. You shouldn't play drums. Yes, you should. You shouldn't play guitars. Yeah, you can. Well, let's each go off our own ways and we'll, won't play instruments in worship and we will. Um, oh, us Christians can be so silly. <laughs> but that's a great, th and these two groups have really started to come back together. But I want you to just understand, we are not a denomination, but we do have a history. A and from where we do, bad, we do uh, communion every week because of our history of coming out of the restoration movement and this high value of communion every time you gather, okay? So that is a little bit of the history of this restoration movement from where we come. I want to give you a quick history of Boulder Valley Christian Church. In 1961 was the first service of, of BVCC and it stayed good looking people the whole time, right? Uh, the church grew and in 1967, they had bought property on 5300 Baseline. This is over here. It's where Second Baptist Church is now. That church was Boulder Valley Christian Church. They moved from meeting at the Odd Fellows Hall on Pearl Street to 5300 Baseline and had service here. Over the next 20 years, the church continued to grow. Here's a picture of Easter, 1986. You can see that they've uh, 
you know, built a building. They had a couple different building campaigns. The church expanded. It continued to grow. I started coming to this church in 1989 when they were in this building and they were saying, hey, we're still growing and getting bigger and we've got to do something. And so uh, they, they sold that building to Second Baptist Church for three years, uh, did services in Boulder High School and Fairview High School. And so they did church out of the box and they'd set up every Sunday and tear down as they purchased property here at 7100 South Boulder Road and that this church, Boulder Valley Christian Church then, in 1993, moved to this location where we've been for 25 years. And so the church, uh, since 1961 till now, it's how old? <laughs> oh, baby, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Honor that generation, however old they are, that the one that's been before us. Yeah, they've been, been around for, what, 57 years, uh, this church. And so I, I think it's really important that we recognize, especially when we say membership, that we honor the generations that have gone before and the history of this church. And so one of the things is that there are founding documents, so there's guiding documents of this church. The bylaws, any nonprofit in the U.S. has to have bylaws, your articles of incorporation and bylaws, but then you have the bylaws of the church that those founding members in 1961 set up. How is this church going to be governed? How is it going to make decisions? Those bylaws, which are, which are in effect today, say this is a congregational, it's a local congregational church. So there's decisions that are made and that the members vote on that. The members have say in it. So, so within our bylaws, it says for the, for the church to be governed, you have to have members. Now, in order to be a member, let me walk through this. In order to be a member, you've got to, they have four things. Faith, repentance, confession, baptism. Faith is basically, I, I believe in that, I wrote Orthodox, but that historical Christian. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, was sent uh, to save humanity and to pave the way through him that we can have connection with God again and that, that his spirit indwells us and that one day he will come back and make right all that is wrong. It, it is, and let me see, where did I put these documents? I've got some things printed out. I didn't do, get, do one for everyone, but just if you want them. Faith would be the statement of faith. These are the essentials. Remember that statement that said, in essentials, unity like these are the essentials of the faith. Talk, talks about things. We believe there's one God. We believe the Bible's inspired. We believe in the deity of Jesus. We believe salvation is grace through faith. We believe in the present ministry of the Holy Spirit and the unity of all believers. It's the central tenets of Christianity. We say in these, we've got to agree. In order to be a member, you have to be a, a Christian, a basic follower of Jesus that, that subscribes and says, yeah, this is what I believe. This is what, what I've given myself to. So it's faith, then repentance. That's just basically saying, I've turned, I've turned from, let's put it in the context of today. I've turned from being my own authority and my own king. And I've turned and said, Jesus, you are king. I've turned from my way of sin and said, God, I want to walk in your ways. Confession, confession back then, it's not like then stand up and tell everyone your worst sins. That's not what you have to do to be a member here. <laughs> um, <laughs> confession is just at one point in the scriptures uh, Jesus is in a place and Jesus says to his followers he says who do people say I am and they say oh man some people say this and some people say that and some people say this and Jesus says okay what about you who do you say that I am and Peter who Michelle spoke of this morning said and you are the Christ the son of the living God it's who you are. And so that is the confession. It, it, a better word would probably be profession. Yeah, I, I profess. And then the fourth thing is baptism. That then, and we've said over and over, that baptism, I'll show you this in a minute, is the outward side of, sign of an internal decision. Boulder Valley Christian Church does not believe that you have to be baptized to be saved. Okay? You, you hear that. So some of those churches would say that, that you went to. Nobody believes that here. We do, not, we do not preach that. 
But we recognize that baptism is, is some of an obedience. When you open up the scriptures and you look over and over, they become Christians and they're baptized. So, so they learn who Jesus is and they're baptized. That it's this outward side, sign of this internal decision. So, some of us, if, if baptism is a thing for you, uh, I printed off something else I'm going to have. Do a baptism class here. I'll maybe need to do it again after this seminar. But this is just some basic teaching here on why baptism, what is baptism, what are the scriptures on baptism. So I'll make that available to us later today also. There are probably four groups of people. Because this is a membership class. So to be a member, you have to, you have, to have faith that Jesus is Christ. You have to repent. You have to have confession or profession and baptism. Baptism by immersion. So our founding documents and the bylaws are very clear that for someone to be a member of this church, you have to be baptized by immersion to be a member. I think there's probably four groups of people in this room right now. And I want to address each of you. One group, some of you have been baptized by immersion. You're believers. You want to become a member and you're like, sweet. Easy. You're in. Okay? <laughs> Let me make it harder for you. You're in. Um, some of us have never been baptized for, for whatever reasons. We've never been baptized. Let, let me say this very clearly. That, that it is not... Don't get baptized to become a member. Baptism is much more sacred than that. Okay? So do not get baptized to become a member. That said, God may use membership and this conversation to, to challenge you or to maybe speak to you and say, you know what, I haven't been baptized. Why not? What does the Bible say about baptism? Let, let me go on a journey here. Let me talk to Matt or some other pastors and open the scripture. Let me pray. God, is this something you have for me? Let me learn about this. Okay? There's a third group of people that some of us have not, that some of us have been baptized as babies. And that our parents, this was my story. Uh, my parents, we were good Methodists, I believe, at the time, and I was a baby, and I got the sprinkle, and I was baptized. And that Boulder Valley Christian Church, and really, even when you go into the Bible, you, you look, and ba baptism of babies is not a biblical practice. And at baptism, it seems to be very clear that baptism is something that someone decides when they're at an age that they can make a decision. It's an outward sign of the internal decision of, I want to turn from a life of sin. I, I, I confess and I believe. I profess. You have to be at some age where you're able to do that. No one can do that for you. We're not going to grab anyone and force dunk them. And in the same way, you know, that's why at the church, we do baby dedications and we dedicate babies and we pray over them, but we don't do baptisms here. But so my story was I'd been baptized as a baby and as I learned, as I actually came to this church, I was in high school and I started to learn about baptism. I've been a Christian for a number of years, but then as I learned what it said, I was baptized in that old building in 5300 South Boulder Road uh, by immersion and said, yeah, I understand this now in the process. For some of you, you're maybe baptized as babies, you say, man, God is is this something you're calling me to do now? Then we have, a, we have a final group of people. And you're the hardest group. <laughs> Some of you have been baptized as adults, but by sprinkling, not by immersion. And the bylaws of Boulder Valley Christian Church are incredibly clear. To be a member of BVCC, you have to be baptized by immersion. <clears throat> I prayed about this one, you guys. Um, if that is you, I cannot stand before God and tell you it's wrong. I cannot stand before God and say, well, well God, I told them that since they got sprinkled as adults because they were in that setting or in that church or that was the form at that, that they were taught, I told them they had to be baptized in our church and be done by immersion. I, I just really believe, friends... I can't stand before God and do that. Maybe I'll get fired from Boulder Valley Christian Church for saying that. But I can't. But I can say that, I'm, that I 
honor the generation that's gone before us. And our bylaws are very clear that to be a member, you've got to be baptized by immersion. Not in this church, but just in that form. Okay? So, possibilities for you, if, that, if that's your criteria. Uh, possibility number one is that you just don't become a member. Which, no one checks the membership card. You know that, right? Like, membership is not now you can be a part of the family. No. All, all of you guys here aren't members. You're, like, I look around this room. You guys are all part of the core of Boulder Valley. So, so one possibility is just saying, Matt, and we have people in the church that I've talked to and have made this decision. Matt, my baptism at that other church when I got sprinkled was really meaningful. And I can't just, I see that's a biblical way and it maybe would have been better, but that baptism was really meaningful and I'm not going to get baptized again. That's between you and the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. Another possibility is that you do get baptized. And you get baptized by immersion. And you do it as a rededication, a rededication of your commitment. In the same way, like sometimes you renew your vows in your marriages. Like, okay, let, let's do this as, as almost a renewal of vows, a, a, a rededication and a proclamation. Say, this is part of my community. And I'm doing this in front of my community and part of it. But hear me, it's got to be something that you stand right with God with. This is part of one of those, you know, 7% of things that aren't totally in the Bible, what Michelle talked of. Say, man, we've got to pray. Lord, what are you calling me to here? Which I'd love to talk with you about. With any, any of the elders, any of the leaders of the church would love to talk with you. So those are the, those, I know the baptism for membership is the, the most, the stickiest point. And so I've tried to cover, some of us have been baptized, it's great. Some of us haven't been baptized, we need to make a decision. Some of us were baptized as babies and haven't been immersed as adults. Some of us were baptized by sprinkling as adults. And we've got to say, God, are you calling me to be baptized by immersion here so I could be a member? This, um, what, let me tell you what you can do as a member. Oh, man. The benefits are huge, guys. Get ready. All right, this church is structured. This church is structured that we have elders, trustees, and then pastors and staff. So a lot of times the, the leadership of the church, are the elders, the elders care for the pastors. The elders are like my boss. They're going to say, Matt, how are you doing? What are your goals? What are you working on? So they, they care for me. And I am an elder as the lead pastor of this church through the bylaws. I am an elder, and I'm also the lead pastor. But the elders so help oversee me, and then they help protect the vision of the church. Uh, is our doctrine, are we, are we doing anything, are we getting crazy? Are we staying in part of the mission and the biblical mandate for what it is to be church? And then they serve the congregation in all kinds of different ways. The trustees oversee the finances and the physical building. So, and, and honestly, guys, the trustees, the elders have been doing a fair bit of this. I'm really hoping in the future that we get the trustees back trusteeing and uh, helping take care of some of the finances and the building. Then you have the pastors who lead and shepherd the congregation and the staff, equip the church for ministry, and love the surrounding community. That, that, that's a part, that's a unique thing of Boulder Valley. And I say to our staff, I say, listen, it's not just about caring for the church, it's also about caring for the community. I believe that Boulder Valley is not just a church for us, it's a church for Boulder County and, and then for the world. So as a member, you can be a trustee or an elder. If you're not a member, you can't be a trustee or an elder. You can, as a member, you can vote. Um, I announced this morning that we're going to have that congregational meeting in second week in November, you could vote on the budget and you can also vote who are going to be the elders and trustees. Um, you could say, yeah, they're a good one or no, I don't like them. So you could vote at that meeting. Also, if I would ever quit or get fired or something like that, let's hope that doesn't happen. But at some point, I will not be the lead pastor here. What will happen is the elders will bring someone else and say to the church members, hey, we think this person should be the senior pastor and they maybe do a big search or however that happens, then the members would, would approve or disapprove that selection. Okay? So that, that is what you can do as members. To be a member, you also have to be an active member, which means you've come to at least half of the Sunday mornings throughout a year, and you've got to be a member for three months before you're considered active. Okay? Matt, 
Why are you doing a membership class? To honor the generation that's gone before us. The polity of what's set up of how this church runs and the bylaws and also to prepare this church for the next generation and the generation that's coming up. I, I pulled out the membership list this year because to be an elder, you have to be a member. So I said, okay, we're, we're getting to elder nominations. Who, who, who are we going to nominate? And I pulled out the membership list and, and I said, this is so inaccurate of actually the fullness of those who call our church home and who our church is, who the members, who, who the core people of this church are. I said, man, this, this is not, this isn't, this isn't accurate. We need to have an accurate membership list of, of who is in this church. And a big part of it is because of leadership opportunities. I, most of the membership list, and I'm not saying against anyone's age here, the membership list right now is usually, is mainly people 50 years and older. That, yes. <laughs> Younger, younger, but who are all awesome people. But you don't see that many younger. You, you don't see next generation people becoming members. And I say, but man, we need leadership opportunities. If you're going to be an elder or a trustee, you need to be a member in this church. Guess what? We want younger people coming up, being elders and to being trustees. And, and we want to help set that up and that the leadership of this church is going to be handed off from one generation to the next. And we need younger people coming up and stepping up into this. Another thing is that in the next couple years, I really believe that we're going to need to amend the governance and the structure to better accomplish our mission. The bylaws of Boulder Valley Christian Church are not the Bible. The bylaws are not the Bible. In the same way, our goal is not to make members, it's, it's to make committed followers of Jesus who are passionate about Him. The bylaws are set up to accomplish the mission of the church. Over the next few years, uh, I, I really believe that we will need to amend the bylaws. And I want to invite everyone to have a voice in that. Those of us who call this church home, who, who are connected, I want you to have a vote. I want you to be able to say, yeah, we do think that this would be good, or this wouldn't be good, or help us form as we prepare this church for the next generation. Say, what is the right structure of church? Not just for 1961, but for 2021 to 2051. The structure of this church that God's mission is best accomplished in how we organize ourselves and govern ourselves. That's why I'm asking for people to be members. That's why I'm asking you guys to be members. Okay? So I'm already over 50. You're over 50. We don't, if you're over 50, we don't want you. So, so I, I should have made that writing on the wall bigger. Almost half this room. All right. Wait up. I don't want to do questions because I know we could do a bunch of questions, but I don't want to do questions. But you, unless something's crazy unclear and you're like, Matt, um, let, let, me, let me just say a couple things. What time is it? 11.06. Oh, my word. Chop, chop. In the next couple years, we'd love to see Boulder Valley Christian Church move to two services. We'd love in the next year to launch 10 new life groups and have trained and equipped life group leaders who are opening up their homes, right? Opening up the scriptures together that we're seeing so many new people come in and leaders be developed. Uh, we're going to continue growing the children's ministry and the student ministry, like valuing that next generation and equipping that next generation. Uh, we, we're going to continue to see how God uses this family to transform homes, communities, and the world. There are good days ahead for this church. And, and we're actually at a really unique and fun time. So I want to invite all of us to be members to be connected to the history and the future of what this church is doing. And so what I've done is everyone's got these cards, right? <coughs> Some of us already have it filled out, baby. If you click, if you check this, um, <laughs> I'm a follower of Jesus. I've been baptized. Note when it says that, read into it. I've been baptized by immersion. Okay, I want to become a member, and then I got more questions, because Matt wouldn't let us ask questions, because he's trying to get us out of here quick. I will follow up with you, okay? I want to be baptized. 
Some of you might be ready to just say that right now. Listen, I, I, I want to be baptized. I've been thinking about this actually for a while. And I'll follow up. If there's anything that we missed on there or that you have questions or, you know, write something on the back. I will follow up with you. Looks good. That's what I found. That is the best little basket. That's huge. Okay, what I'm setting over here on this table are three things. One of them is Boulder Valley Christian Church's statement of faith. That is just uh, the basics of the essentials of what we believe. Second is the bylaws. Like I've referred to the bylaws a number of times. You might want to read the bylaws. If you're that kind of person, have fun. <laughs> no, number, th number three is... Just these scriptures on what is baptism and what is the biblical model of baptism, where does it come from, and you can, you can look at this, pick it up, and I would love to talk with you more about that, if that's you. So, Paul, set those right over there on that table. Gary and Mark, you guys as two elders, Gary Mansdorfer right here is one of the elders, wave to us here, Gary. Right, whoa. And Mark Thompson is an elder. Dennis Pelly is also an elder. He's uh, kicking it in Cancun and can't, can't, can't be here this morning. Do you guys have anything to add? I, I'd like to say that if anyone wants to stick around and ask questions, because I, I know there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Questions. You know, for example, membership does not mean you're committed here for life. If you want to walk out the next day and find another church, you can leave. Membership does not mean we monitor your tithes or um, <laughs> make a report or anything like that. Um, uh, you can be a member if your spouse isn't a member or other people in your family are. There's a lot of misperceptions, so if you have questions, stick around and ask them. Yeah. Don't that to be an obstacle. Membership does entail a secret handshake, which... Uh... <laughs> You are going to, uh, yeah, and the flossing dance. It's flossing lessons and a secret handshake. Yeah, but it, not that one. Sorry. Now I got fired. Another question just came up. It does not cost, you don't have to pay for membership. You don't have to pay for it. Costco. Yeah. You know, it needs to out of this world. Yeah, the benefits are out of this world. Yeah. If you do become a membership, we'll send you a year's worth of sermons. At, uh, for for $35.99 membership, you'll get a free set of sermons. Uh, you guys hear the heart behind this. There's a lot of questions, but I want you to hear is the heart. I will be here. Gary will be here. Mark will be here. If you have any questions, come up and talk. All right? Let me really fast say a prayer over us. Father, I thank you for the people in this room. I thank you for the ways you are at work in the life of this church. I thank you since 1961 until today and for the future. God, your will be done. Your kingdom come, right? Thank you that we get to be a part of this church community and serve you. Uh, we love you. Amen.